Throughout WWE history, names such as The Rock, Hulk Hogan, John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin have stepped through the ropes and left a lasting impression on fans. But there are also those talents that slip under the radar and consequently get completely forgotten about by the fans. These talents may receive a substantial push, but their run and presence on screen is so underwhelming that as soon as they're off television, fans erase them from their minds forever. But which ones were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers everybody forgot. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Johnny Parisi. Johnny Parisi may look familiar to some fans, but that's because he's currently a mainstay on Impact Wrestling. But what fans often forgot is that Parisi actually had two different runs in WWE. His first run came in 1995, where he would work a number of enhancement matches under the name of Joe Dorgan. What a name. These matches didn't impress WWE enough for the company to hire him to a contract, and he would quickly find himself joining WCW, where he would remain until 1999. In 2005, he signed a developmental deal with WWE, now under the name of Johnny Parisi. Parisi would mainly work on shows such as Heat and seemed to have a reputation for being a good hand. But unfortunately, his lack of character certainly hindered his time in WWE, as fans virtually had no idea what he was supposed to represent. His time in WWE was short as, by the summer of 2006, he would be released from his WWE contract. Number 9. Eric Escobar During his time in FCW, WWE officials believed that Eric Escobar was going to be a big star on the main roster. Upon his SmackDown debut, he'd be instantly associated with Vicky Guerrero and this seemed to be a great combination. Anyone who's associated with Vicky at this time was given instant credibility and WWE knew that whoever was managed by her would get over. Well, the partnership wouldn't last long, as WWE would decide to turn Escobar face. This simply didn't work as the fans had failed to build up a connection with Escobar, so the idea of him being a lovable babyface was never going to work. He would quickly be relegated to WWE Superstars before his release in January of 2010. It's never been explained from either side why he was released, but in 2010, Meltzer would claim that those in WWE believed that Escobar was a head case so this may have influenced his premature firing. Number 8. Bracus. A Bracus on paper seemed like Vince McMahon's perfect superstar. He was a bodybuilder from Germany and had one of the best physiques in pro wrestling. WWE decided to debut him in 1996 before he took an absence of leave until the Attitude Era began. The Attitude Era was a time where superstars needed more than a great physique to become popular though. Bracus struggled to get over and it didn't help that he wasn't the best in the ring. Discussing Bracus on the Something to Wrestle podcast, Bruce Pritchard described him as having very little athletic ability. Although he had runs in both WWE and ECW, it was clear that the pro wrestling world wasn't the right fit for Bracus, and this likely explained his early retirement in 1999. Number 7. Jesus now, The Ruthless Aggression Era had its fair share of forgettable characters, but perhaps the most forgettable was Jesus. Jesus was introduced to fans during John Cena's feud with Carlito over the US title. During the rivalry, he was accused of stabbing Cena in a nightclub, a drastic and sinister storyline especially considering that SmackDown was still operating under a PG guideline. This unusual angle was created because Cena needed time off to film the first Marine movie, so this is naturally the most sensible thing WWE could come up with. Jesus' run in the company was brief and he would wrestle Cena at the Armageddon pay-per-view in 2004 for the US title, but came up short. Following the pay-per-view match, he would suffer an injury at a house show which required surgery and it was shortly after his recovery that Jesus would be released from the company. Number 6. CM Skunk In 2013, WWE decided to make Ryback a Paul Heyman guy. Ryback would then embark in a feud with CM Punk, which is notable for making Punk so miserable that he wanted to leave the company with immediate effect. But one of the more infamous segments during the rivalry took place on SmackDown during the build to the 2013 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Ryback and Paul Heyman would take on a CM Punk impersonator known as CM Skunk. Ryback and Heyman would win the match and CM Skunk would never be seen again. Number 5. Bam Neely Bam Neely made his WWE debut during the rivalry between Chavo Guerrero and Kane in 2008. Neely would act as Chavo's bodyguard mainly because fans were struggling to take Chavo seriously in a feud against Kane. 
He would become part of the La Familia, a stable consisting of Edge, Vicky Guerrero, Chavo, and the Edgeheads. Lily was put in a great position to succeed, especially working with someone of the stature of Edge, but his WWE run was a complete flop. Once the stable dissolved and the partnership with Chavo came to an end, Neely struggled to find a meaningful place on the card. He was therefore released in early 2009, putting an end to his WWE career. There were plans to repackage him and Vince McMahon was said to be rather hands-on with this repackage, but it was believed that Neely's part in the injury Evan Bourne suffered in 2008 may have altered Vince's perception of the once promising star. Number 4. The Gemini the Shane Twins were one of the most promising tag teams on the independent circuit and in 2005, WWE decided to sign the Twins to a developmental deal. Their new name would be The Gemini and when they were eventually called up to SmackDown to be protégés of Simon Dean, the duo would make frequent appearances on SmackDown at first but they were quickly relegated to Velocity. Their WWE careers began to go downhill when one of the members of the tag team suffered an injury. But once fully recovered, they decided to send both members of the team to Deep South Wrestling before releasing them from their contracts in early 2007. Now, if you're wondering what WWE believed Gemini's legacy to be, 10 years ago, WWE uploaded a YouTube video titled Boring Tag Teams The Gemini. And that just pretty much sums it up. Number 3. Gunner Scott now, although Gunnar Scott made a few appearances for WWE between 2001 and 2003, he made his official WWE debut back on SmackDown in 2006. Gunnar had the perfect debut as he defeated former world champion Booker T on SmackDown. Later in the show, he would be praised by Chris Benoit and it looked like WWE had big plans for him. The initial plans called for Gunnar to be a protege of Benoit before the two would eventually feud. Two of WWE's top agents at the time were Finley and Dean Malenko and they claimed that Gunner was copying everything Benoit did and he needed something original. This forced WWE to send him back to developmental. His last match on the main roster was a match against Mr. Kennedy and after the match took place, WWE literally had the great Carly and Davari put Gunner in a body bag. This was a complete character assassination. He would be released on October 2006, putting an end to a promising yet frustrating WWE run. Number 2. Jackson Andrews a Jackson Andrews had a blink and you'll miss it run in WWE. He was presented as Tyson Kidd's bodyguard but he added little to Tyson's act. Andrews didn't have a single match on television before he was moved back to FCW. Andrews would eventually be released from his WWE deal in May of 2011 and it was reported that he was extremely green in the ring and he was failing to improve. WWE saw no future in him in the company so they decided to cut him loose. But Andrews hit mainstream headlines in 2012 after it was reported that he was accused of beating his fiance Rosa Mendez. Things went from bad to worse for Andrews as it was then uncovered that Andrews was engaged to two different women at the same time. And number 1. Hade Vanson In 2008, a vignette aired featuring Hade Vanson. In this vignette, Vanson would talk about the darkness and this character was similar to the early days of the Fallen Angel character that Christopher Daniels portrayed. WWE had major plans for Vanson and this included a stable of superstars with supernatural abilities and this was potentially going to lead to a match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 25. According to former creative team member Freddie Prince Jr, there were even plans for Vanson to be revealed as The Undertaker's son, but Vince McMahon shot these ideas down when it was brought to his attention that Vanson was 5'11". Two weeks after this infamous vignette aired, Vanson would be shockingly released from his contract. It would have been easy for WWE to repackage him or go in a different direction that wasn't linked to The Undertaker. But this was a drastic career altering decision and could have been easily avoided. But there you have it folks, 10 WWE wrestlers that everybody forgot. Do you remember any of these? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.